Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, the president and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is August 29th. We've got a crazy list of stories today. Michael is out running around in customer offices. Let's go to Ukraine strikes two more oil depots deep in Russian territory. Jeez. What's good for Generac is bad for America. We bought one anyway. This is from Robert Bryce. I absolutely love Robert Bryce. You've got to follow him on his Substack. It'll be in the show notes. And he's got some stats and some figures. Love Robert Bryce. Good friend of the show. How Trump can win on zero energy, zero energy poverty. What a great article this is. Followed up with another Trump story, why Trump would be better for the climate than Kamala. Got an ex-grope joke on this one waiting to happen. Prime Minister vows to fix energy crisis. Holy smokes, the UK is in trouble. Leave now. Libya, power struggle spikes oil prices. I'll tell you what, that whole thing is just really sad. But let's start off with Ukraine. Ukraine strikes two more oil depot depots deep into Russian territory. This whole war makes me airsick. When Biden told Zelensky, according to the folk, the presses that are out there, and forced him to have Boris Yeltsin tear up a signed peace treaty two years ago, this absolutely makes me airsick that we're even having this conversation. Ukraine attacked the Zenit Oil Depot, which houses oil produces oil products reservoir over 700 miles away in the Kiev. Kiev ties both depots to Moscow's military end complex. We are really on the edge of World War III, and we do not need to be poking the bear. We need to be ending this war. This is absolutely ludicrous. In Ukraine's Donbass region, Russia is intensifying its offensive with the Kyiv Post describing Ukrainian forces on this outgunned and outnumbered. Zelensky, this is on you and this is on Biden. You guys should have knocked this crap off several years ago and saved a lot of Ukrainian lives. Hey, let's rumble on to the next story here. What's good for Generac is bad for America. We bought one anyway. Robert Stack is just a great energy expert and thought leader. Generac, if you're not aware, is a fantastic brand for natural gas generators to plug in for failover, either immediate failover or manual. And given that Generac is profiting from people like me, this is directly out of the the article. Back in 2021, during winter storm Uri, we lost power for two days at that time. I thought, this is Robert speaking, Texas grid would recover and all would return to normal. That hasn't happened. Over the last 12 months, we've lost power at our house in central Austin three times. And in each instance, the outage lasted eight hours or more. Plus, ERCOT has repeatedly warned about looming power shortages. Here's why. They're doing the best they can, but when you flood a grid, again, I say this all the time, the grid is non-discriminatory when it comes to whether or not the rules that it applies. It applies by physics and fiscal responsibility in order to keep low energy prices there. He's installed a Generac whole house standby generator. It was about $15,000 for a 22 kilowatt gas fired air cool system that will automatically turn on when the lights go out. Current power technologies is in San Antonio. Pretty cool. But here's what's really concerning is the number of grid outages that are coming across the U.S., are significantly being more and more forecasted because of the balance of the grid. We've been told that we need to double the grid in the next, in Texas alone, in the next five years. Took a hundred years how to get here. 
This is just incredible. North American Electric Reliability Corporation has labeled significant portions of the United States and Canada as being a high risk resource for adequately shortfalls during a normal season peak condi conditions in 2024 through 2028 period due to the supply demand dynamics. We believe utility supply shortfalls related warnings may continue in the future. And we're, I'm hearing that all across the United States. So when you take a look at this, be prepared because it doesn't matter if it's a man-made disaster, if it's a natural disaster, we have to stand up and defend our families and our neighbors and our friends. And that's how we all survive together because the do not plan on the government to be there for you. You shouldn't. You should be there for you and your neighbors. During the uh, debate, David Selby, Senator David Selby, a Republican from Waco, stood on the floor of the Texas Senate and declared that after deregulation, people will be able to shop for electricity. If they don't like the electric provider they got, they can switch. If the price of can of beans goes up 10 cents, people can shop somewhere else. Shop to your drop center, but electricity ain't beans. You can't, you do, I mean, yes, it's nice having an open market. And yes, I do. ERCOT is having some problems, but I tell you what, I would rather have an ERCOT type system than I would be part of the rest of the United States' grid. I'm not real sure. Whatever it is, my homes, I've got multiple power sources and Generac is a good brand. So, but you got to be able to afford it is the sad part. Anyway, shout out to Robert Bryce. It's robertbryce.substack.com. Give him a follow and support him there as well, too. Let's go to the next story here. How Trump can win on energy, zero energy poverty. If that was Trump's tagline, I guarantee you it would resonate like just like we have RFK Jr. now in the Unity Party saying, hey, let's get rid of chemtrails. Let's get rid of the poisons in our food. Let's get healthy again. Let's get our grid healthy again and low cost energy. Kamala Harris and her new running mate, Tim Waltz, will impoverish, impoverish America. I could not agree more with that statement. The best way to understand is most important that least known policy pipe dreams as Vice President Harris backed so-called net zero, which means offsetting every iota in man-made greenhouse gases. Waltz, as governor, has pushed one of the most aggressive net zero policies in America, mandating that no carbon emissions in Minnesota by 2040. Do you know how costly that is and how expensive it is to the consumer? Whether or not it's plant food or not, that is not the issue. We do to cut pollution. There is a difference between carbon, methane, and pollution, and we need to cut our footprint as low as we can. And you can do it if you're fiscally responsible. The, the way the article writes this, the promise is economic suicide. I have to admit, this is written by Chris Wright. He's a CEO over there at uh, Liberty Energy. He is a class act, and this was released out on Real Clear Politics. One of the best things Donald Trump can do is promise to replace the Harris Waltz climate agenda with a real pathway to zero energy poverty. Chris Wright is one of my all time big heroes. He, I have had the pleasure of interviewing him several times, once with Doomberg and Chris Wright. That'll be in the show notes as well, too. He is a rock star. This is an absolute wonderful article as well, too. Let's go to the next article here. Why Trump would be better for the climate than Kamala. This one's kind of funny. And Ms. Producer, if you could bring this picture up. I ask X Grok, I ask Grok on X, however you want to phrase that, create a picture of Kamala Harris and President Trump on a debate stage. And this picture actually kind of cracked me up. She almost looks a little bit like Michelle Obama, a cross between a cross-eyed Harris and Michelle Obama. Not sure. I got tickled at it. That's, that's just a straight picture. I thought it was kind of fun. But let's go through this article. The Democrat supports extreme climate policies. Climate change happens, folks. It, it happens. 
And when geoengineering is involved, like chemtrails, just like RFK Jr. has asked and said he wants to stop, that's geoengineering. And so when you think, okay, climate change, it changes, but let's get rid of the pollution factor and that will make all the difference in the world. A common sense approach to energy policy will lead to a stronger and more secure America while cutting carbon emissions. Yay. Vice President Kamala Harris, though, has endorsed the far less worst climate schemes. Uh, she was an early co-sponsor of the 93 trillion Green New Deal has called for banning of fracking. She has not come back out and said, oh, she for fracking, uh, point blank said, I will allow fr fracking. Hadn't said it. That's because she hasn't had an interview yet. So it's as eight. 29 she has not had an interview so and nobody's asked her about that american natural gas exports displace higher emitting gas and coal use abroad reducing global emissions the fact that the harris biden administration has still filing to cancel drilling in alaska and also banning the lng and they're filing again to get this done it is again they're ruining the opportunity for countries to take advantage of great, low-cost U.S. natural gas. Natural gas is one of the biggest reasons the United States has lowered our CO2 output, and we need to allow other countries to have the same advantage in order to do that. Regulations, not Republicans, are the biggest barrier to deploying clean energy in this country and out-competing China. Couldn't agree with that one more the u.s economy this one line i couldn't agree with more three times more carbon efficient than as china but americans producers aren't rewarded boy you, that is an understatement trump administration should remand china for all of its unfair practices tariffs this was in the uh, washington times a second trump term that cuts red tape will make America great again. And I do respect President Trump for his drill, baby, drill, but that's not the only thing that we've got to do. So let's go to the prime minister vows of the UK vows to fix the energy crisis. This is what you're going to get if you vote for Kamala and Waltz. If you want this, vote because the prime minister of the UK is absolute a communist. Keir Stummer outlined several measures, including the establishment of the new energy company, Great British Energy, to help reduce bills and create jobs. Not going to happen. Their bills are through the roof. Their energy policies in the UK are abysmal. And that's why we're, cre uh, quote unquote, cracking down on non-doms. Those who make the mess should have to do their own bit to clean it up. That's why we're strengthening the powers of the water regulator and backing up tough fines on water companies that have let sewage seek into our river rivers and lakes. They have such a messed up energy system. What is happening is a byproduct of their policies is deindustrialization. The key world of the West is deindustrializing in Germany, the UK, and New York, and California. You take a look at those main areas of the West, and they are deindustrializing de because of their poor energy policies. You want to go broke, go woke, or go green. I'm not sure however you want to phrase that. But anyway, let's roll to the next story here. Libya power struggle spikes oil prices. I mean, I've never thought that I would be working a news desk for over four years and you sit back and kind of go look at, we've got the Houthis have blown up the tanker. It is now going to be up there around the fifth largest oil spill from a terrorist organization that is out there. We have Libya. Libya's eastern government stopped all oil production and exports on Monday as it vied against Tripoli Boast rival for control of the central bank and crude oil reserves. Nearly all of the country's oil fields are in eastern Libya. 
The Tripoli based, Tripoli based government wants to replace the Haftar ally and central bank governor. I, I apologize for the name, Sakir Al Kabir, due to accusations that Kabir mishandled oil revenues. This is really sad because I don't think that they're going to get this fixed in eight months. And that's quite a bit of oil that is coming off of the market as well. Libya's share of OPEC production was about 4% in 2023. The majority of its production goes to Europe. This is also a lighter grade of oil. So it is a very important for the refiners over there. Two months into the Russian-Ukraine war, the world struggled to replace the Russian oil and gas. A Libyan oil blockade was announced over demands that Tripoli based quit in favor. Faith, again, I apologize for the name. I did go to Oklahoma State, as you can tell by my shirt, Bashaga, the rival prime minister appointed by the Eastern government. We're happy to have the oil not on the global markets because it would make Russian crude more expensive and would harm Western European customers. So the world is in a different spot right now. And we need leaders in our own government, let alone the rest of the world. So buckle up, like, subscribe, share this, read this to your pets. Also, if you're an oil trader, I want to give a shout out to those that have reached out to us and go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk, reach out to us. We will connect you with the right folks. If you're looking for jet fuel, you're looking for LNG, oil, gas, any kind of trading supply or trading assets, you got a great team. We review assets in the oil and gas industry. Thanks. Have an absolutely wonderful day. We'll talk to you guys soon.